Hey everybody, it's Derek with Junk Monkeys here in Eugene, Oregon. And today I wanted to talk about hypodermic needles and uh, how many I've been finding on a lot of these job sites that I've been going to, uh, especially when I'm hired to clean up a homeless site. Uh, it's almost every time, almost every single time I'm beginning to find these needles. And uh, I just wanted to kind of share a few thoughts of mine and maybe a few safety tips, uh, especially if you have kids running around out there in the parks and such, because it seems like it's a growing problem here. Uh, something I almost always come across, uh, that's if I don't find the needle first, is these caps. And uh, essentially I used to think that, before I really knew, I, I used to think this was like maybe just to a different type of needle and this was to a thinner one. Uh, but in reality, it is to the plunger. This, this thicker one is to the plunger side. And the needle side goes to the center guy. Which, by the way, the proper way to recap this is to either place it on the table and put it in that way so there's no chance of you accidentally sticking your finger, or to use some sort of uh, forceps. So just for example, I'll use just these simple pliers to go ahead and cap it real quick. And by the way, this is according to OSHA for safety. Um, but another thing I wanted to talk about was how to contain them properly and uh, what kind of gloves that you want. So as far as containers go, you need a red container just like this. Uh, well, it actually doesn't have to be just like this, but it does have to be red and sealable. Uh, that's because when you turn them into, say, the Lane County Hazmat Department, they'll know that there is some kind of biohazard in there. Uh, so, for example, I actually came across uh, this many needles just at my last job site, but this is not the proper container to, to keep them in. Uh, so this is actually what I do is I got this five gallon bucket, I put the biohazard label on there and then I store them in there and then we put a cap on that. So if you also come across other type of uh, potentially infectious materials such as say toilet paper, used toilet paper or uh, bloody rags or something, you can also use uh, red bags, preferably ones that have the biohazard label on it. Uh, but uh, when it comes to syringes, you need an actual container that's going to prevent it from being able to poke out. So uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was gloves. Uh, these type of gloves are not going to do it. Uh, these are just your very average utility or garden gloves. Uh, but you'll see right here, let's see. You see how, I, how easy that was for it to go right through. I don't know if the camera's picking up that ne that needle or not, but it just punched right through with almost no resistance whatsoever. Uh, the proper type of gloves that you're going to want to wear in case you're out there volunteering, or say you're out in the park and or uh, you're out in the backyard and somebody threw a needle in your backyard, uh, these are actually the type of gloves that you want. These partic this particular brand is called the Hex Armor 9014. It is cut and puncture resistant. And essentially what's going on is inside, let me put this guy down. This is a, this is a sterile needle, by the way. This is not, this is not a used needle. Um, inside, they actually have this special type of lining. And that's only on this side, the orange side, that prevents sharps from penetrating. Now, I should say it's resistant, not proof. So I'm sure if you tried hard enough, you probably could punch through these. But uh, let's see if it will go through this right now, actually. So it looks like it did actually, well, let's see, did it make it through? No, it actually did not. It did go through that orange part, but as you can see, it actually just bent the needle rather than punching through. In fact, I'll give that one more try with another sterile syringe that we have here. I wanted to see this in action. But uh, let's see here. Yeah, so it didn't even go through. 
it just bent the needle. And these are, again, these are called the Hex Armor 9014, and they will provide some resistance against the syringes. So, and by the way, these are 30 gauge, 30 gauge syringes. So there's, there's different sizes of needles, and I'm assuming the, the finer the needle, the easier it's gonna puncture through. But yeah, hopefully this is a, a helpful video, video to you guys, and uh, stay safe. It really does seem to be becoming a problem here in Eugene and Springfield. In fact, I uh, just watched this documentary called Seattle is Dying, and they have it even worse up there. Uh, but it definitely seems like these cities along the I-5 corridor is, uh, we have a growing problem. So stay safe. And also, of course, if you guys need help, if you find a site that you believe might have needles, you can always give us a call. We're actually certified in uh, dealing with this. And uh, so, yeah, we're uh, ready to help you guys out. And our number is 541-337-0619. You can also visit our website. Uh, junkmonkeys.com uh, but again yeah if, if you find this type of situation um, just give us a call so 